All right, guys, how exciting is this? History was made this past weekend at UFC 292 in Boston. We have a special guest here to digest and uh, look back at a totally historic night in MMA history. Coach Tim Welch, thank you so much for taking your time out of your super busy week. I, I imagine there's a bunch of stuff happening for you this week. After that massive, massive moment we saw here on Sunday afternoon in Australia and Saturday night in the US, got to kick this off by asking you this, man, how's it feeling right now that it's kind of sunk in? It's been just over 48 hours or so that Sean's the new undisputed champion of the bantamweight division. Yeah, it really is starting to sink in. It's pretty crazy going to the gym and, and seeing that UFC belt. And uh, now knowing knowing that we have a target on our back, though, pretty much the, the real hard work and discipline, it, it starts now because now is going to be the the hard road. But we're super, super pumped. We're going to have a proper celebration this Saturday to celebrate the belt. And uh, yeah, I mean, he freaking earned it. I, I still still can't believe it and just so happy. Have you had a chance to sit back and sort of appreciate the work yet? Yeah, after the fight, we didn't get done. He had two about two hours of media right after the fight. So we got back to the hotel room at about 2.30, closer to 3, and we just sat up till 6.30, uh, 6.30 a.m., smoked a joint, ate some pizza, watched the fight, and just talked about it and let it soak in a bit. What, what was it like? Like, <laughs> you're sitting there, I imagine, like, that's the crazy thing, right? You have such such a like the high of highs, right? That moment, the celebration, the media, and then it's almost like you're in the hotel room, just a couple of guys eating pizza, you know, doing regular things, and then that belt's probably just sitting there, staring at you guys. What what was that moment of almost like realization, and letting it all sink in? Like, fuck, man, we did it. After all these years, we did it. Yeah, it, it's so wild. Just, I mean, I was going through a lot of stress too, because I couldn't train Sean for that fight, how I wanted to, how I knew mm. I could, I know I could properly get him prepared with the takedown defense, with, uh, developing his guard. Um, but we literally had to just focus on what we could control. And that was just mitts and striking and, and, and good footwork and just keeping the distance. And when he gets close to the fence, being so creative and so jukey with his eyes and his, the little subtle feints people don't even see on TV. And it really froze up Aljo. And I think Aljo is used to being about two, three feet apart from a person, but Sean's a good four feet away from you. So it's hard to set up a takedown when you're four feet away from someone. Um, so we, like I said, we were just focusing on what we can control. It was a stressful week. So to get back to the hotel and that belt sitting there was just probably just the biggest, I can't even explain the emotions, but a, a big relief for me that the fight was over and that we took out that guy. He's such a monster. He's such a beast of an athlete. So tricky. What, the most dangerous match for us in the division easily because of how big he is, how strong he is, and not just how good of a wrestler he is, how good he is at jiu-jitsu, and uh, knocked him out in the second round. Couldn't have went any better. It's still still on cloud nine. Dude, unbelievable. When, so take us into that moment. Like when Sean gets hurt in training camp, we've had, you know, that that's – and you're like, all right, he can't really grapple. I know Sean said that for six weeks, basically, he couldn't really wrestle. And you're going up against one of the best wrestlers in the division, a guy that's known for his grappling. What goes through your mind when you realize, okay, we're going to have to edit this camp. We're going to, we're going to be able to do this aspect of it. And at any point, did you think, man, you know, like maybe we should delay this. Like maybe this isn't, maybe we should come in at a, a little bit of a hundred more percent situation than have to uh, have this big part of our game sort of not be where it needs to be. Uh, yeah, I mean, I didn't re really mention it, but th that injury would have caused probably 95% of people to pull out. But I, I kind of was beating around the bush a little bit, but I just was kind of getting his feel for it. And he was like, no way. There's no way he's pulling out of the fight. So I was like, well, we can still do the air dine. We can still do ladder footwork drills. We can still hit mitts really hard. Um, we can do a lot of single leg defense, but we can't really wrestle and grapple. But it could be worse people there's been champions there's been people who've fought for the belt or that have fought with, with worse injuries um the sparring wasn't that great either every time we were sparring we were getting it was mostly kickboxing um we only got a few sparring sessions because the fight week and the weeks before we didn't want to inflame that rib at all zero so so we weren't even going to test it not even in the locker room not even fight week we were just going to stay away from grappling and just focus on the footwork 
and keep it in his mind that if Aljo takes you down, you're dead, you're done. So that was kind of stuck in his mind. That not that insane how like you guys didn't know how it was going to be until fight night? The fight, I mean, it makes sense. Don't, don't inflame the rib, but it's also insane. Like going to that fight, having no idea what that's going to feel like. Yeah, for sure. And we're just trying to not inflame it at all. So in his mind, maybe he's thinking it is okay. And I was trying to put it in his mind too. If that thing pops out, like just try to grit through it. It's 25 minutes of one day, grit through it and tough it out. Uh, but we didn't have to go there. And he did an excellent job on the on the fence when Aljo was up, uh, um, had a good shot on him. He had a wizard, wrist control, defended the single leg. Like it was just such a picture perfect, crazy moment in that arena that it's hard to even explain. It seems like a dream or a movie. Mm. I remember when you tweeted out uh, leading into the fight that you that um, Sean could knock out Aljo and you'd talk to us about that you know he was having a good training session that day and you would have seen something in the training session that prompted you to put it out now that we're getting a little bit more context about the kind of training camp that you guys had and the fact that you would have had a lot of ups and downs in this training camp I just want to sort of go back to that moment was that the moment where you were like all right we can get this done in the way that it happened this past weekend knockout in that was was there something in that moment where you found that extra confidence all right we don't we don't have 100 percent of the game plan that we might have usually but i see something in sean here where i know he's going to stop aljo yeah i mean we train with such good guys we train with such good guys that know sean's trick no sean's tricks and they, they've sparred with him before and still he's hitting these guys clean on the chin and i know they're better strikers than aljo and watching all the footage of Aljo, all the mistakes he makes on his feet, um, dropping his hands. He, he Sometimes he gets in weird scrambles and starts running away. I know for a fact that he could crack him. And we knew the whole time that he's going to hurt Aljo. Um, but he ended up hurting him uh, bad and, and putting him away. So that's it. That sequence, um, the sort of pullback counter, was that something specifically that you guys trained for? How, like how, how heavy in the arsenal? Was that as far as like fight ending or like, you know, um, things that you guys thought would be very like sort of successful in the fight? Yeah, because we also just to add to that, we saw you guys had the footage in the back and of you guys actually literally drilling that sequence. Yeah. Uh, that literally was probably the main sequence we drilled all fight camp, all uh, fight camp, Try, trying to bait him in, trying to bait him into rushing in all of his fights. He starts in a southpaw position and he walks forward with the left hand into an opposite stance. But the problem is if you're not good and you're not good enough with your range with that, there's a point in that in that sequence where your feet are squared up and sugar floated perfectly out of the way. Uh, we probably we, throughout that fight camp, we probably did that exact same sequence with that right hand and me walking forward with my left hand uh, over like hundreds of times, hundreds of times. Mm. I I know Sean admitted, and I really like this, that he is the most nervous he's ever been, and he sort of like gave Aljo his flowers. I can't imagine what it would have been like for you, man. What was going through your mind making that walk, knowing what you knew, knowing what we didn't know at the time? What, what was going through your mind making that entrance? Uh, the the more more my nerves were the week before the week fight week and the week before that, knowing what we're gonna go have to do. But once the the walk, once they start said walk and we started walking. Uh, a weird sense of calmness. I know how calm he, he is. A weird sense of calmness for me. Like whatever's going to happen is going to happen. So the best the best thing to do right now is focus on what we control. And that's staying calm. Staying calm and giving him the best advice I can right now. And let's see if we can make it happen. And he, he literally is a Michael Jordan type athlete. Anytime we, we're playing different games, like we're playing spike ball, we're playing honey ball, we're playing basketball, we're, any games we're playing – you want to give Sean the rock. He's the playmaker. And for him to, knowing what's going on, for him to go in that arena, how electric it was, and for him to just stay present and calm and nasal breathe that whole fight and make the greatest bantamweight of all time look that bad, it's like he's he's just an incredible athlete. Dude, it, it was phenomenal. You would have also gotten a little bit more confidence after that first round, right? In the corner, did you feel a little bit more at ease, like knowing that Sean, you know, stuff the takedowns, did what he was supposed to do? Yeah, I, I really did feel a little bit more at ease because I, I saw how much trouble Aljo was having cutting him off. And I knew I knew probably he's going to come out and take a little bit more of a risk that second round. Uh, and 
like I said, taking a risk against Sean. That's why he's froze up so many good guys. Like I said, every fight these last probably 13 fights, every single one of them, the game plan is to put Sean on the cage, cut him off and put, put him on the cage. And you don't know how hard that is until you actually spar him. And I saw how hard it was for Aljo that first round, and I just I got a big confidence boost after that. Mm. What's going through your mind when you see that sequence land in the second round? You know it's over before the ref has to step in? Uh, yeah, I mean, I was nervous too because we knew we were going to hurt Aljo, and we've talked about it all week. When you hurt him, we're going to stay super composed. You can stay super composed. So when he hurt him and he was still moving down there a little bit, I was a little bit nervous because I know he was emptying a lot of his – a lot of his uh, tank on putting him away. But then once I talked to Aljo in the cage, I could see he wasn't all there. His eyes weren't all there. Uh, Sean said he saw his eyes roll back a couple times when he was uh, bouncing his head off the canvas and he was bloodied up and it, it was a good, a good stoppage. It really was. Yeah, because there was a bit of, you know, there was a bit of argy-bargy in the old the social media. Marab was saying that he felt like it was stopped a bit early. Like, what was your reaction when you saw some of those, some of those reactions? Yeah, I saw all the reactions, but I didn't see the reaction from Aljo. I don't, I don't know if he said it was stopped early, but he he didn't seem to be complaining at all when that ref pulled him off Sean. He he seemed to be like, fuck, thank God that's over. And you saw what happened to Thomas Almeida. Thomas Almeida took some serious brain damage, got some a lot of swelling in his brain, and is he's probably going to have CTE from that fight. So if they would have kept let it going, let it go, who knows? He could have gotten knocked out cold worse than marlon marias and that would have been a bad bad night so it was a good job by the ref in my opinion a win like that i mean it, it really couldn't have gone any better right and like the the injury in the background kind of makes it even more um just incredible for anyone prior that thought you know what i'm just going to take sean down and like that'll be sort of his kryptonite similar to like with israel sort of earlier on in his career what what kind of message do you think this sends to everybody in the division? And like I think you 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 guys mentioned it, like this is the hardest stylistic matchup in the division going forward. What kind of message do you think this sends to anybody else in the division who thinks, oh, you know, I'm just gonna uh, cut Sean off and uh, you know try and take him down? I think w w if you got a re a real special striker like someone like Izzy or Volk or these guys, they see Sean and they're like, wow. Like he is a problem, but then you have stupid people like Henry Cejudo and stuff that think they're just going to go in there and kick his legs and they're going to take him down easy. And, uh, that's all you got to do is just kick his legs and pressure him. And then, uh, I think Marab too. I, th I think that might've put a little fear in Marab also because Marab makes a lot of those mistakes too. Yes. He's got a scary, scary gas tank. He's going to come forward the whole time, but he reaches and he does a lot of uh, bad stuff fundamentally too. So if that fight happens eventually, he'll probably knock Marab out too. Uh, I think to to actual skilled fighters that can see it, they they see how dangerous he is. I saw um Cejudo. He's trying to call out obviously Sean to fight. What 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 are you making of some of this campaign that he's sort of driving on social media, trying to get the fight with you guys? I mean, I. I would I would like to see the fight. I would like to see the fight, but it's going to be it, it'll be sad for Cejudo cuz he's got such a good legacy. He's got the two belts, the Olympic champion. And now if he has to end his career getting knocked out cold by the kid with pink hair, and now he's got to go into retirement and every time he tweets something, every time he says something, people are just going to flood flood it with uh him getting KO'd. Uh yeah, I don't know. We we offered on the podcast too. We could help Cejudo. He could come to our gym and help him with some footwork and stuff. We could help him with it. Help him with his tactics. Maybe help him with his takedown defense. Because when Aljo put Henry on the cage, he took uh, Henry down. When uh, Aljo put Sugar on the cage, fresh, he couldn't take Sugar down. So be open to help uh, help Henry with some of his skills. Wow. So there's an open invitation right now that stands right now. Henry's welcome to come and learn some stuff from you guys. Yeah, I mean, we could we could help him out. He's a he's a smaller guy. We could help him out with his his techniques. Um, hey, the other thing is, and this is so obviously the win was unbelievable. The way that it happened, the story, you guys getting into the UFC, your journey together. But the other thing is, not only does Sean have the title, but he's got a great amount of challenges for him and a lot of great fights that people want to see, which doesn't always happen because a lot of the times when people win titles in the UFC, they kind of have to beat all the best contenders to get there. And then we struggle finding good matchups for him. People are looking at the division right now. They're looking you know, at Marab, 
uh, Cheeto, Sanhagen, Cejudo, um, maybe Aljo if he comes back and fights again. And they're talking about this is one of the toughest divisions, toughest top sixes in the UFC rankings right now. What, what's your reaction to not only being in this position where you guys have the title, but also being in this position where there's literally like so many different fights that could be made that people want to tune in for? Yeah, like I said, I mean, all jokes aside, all, all those guys are, are are killers. Like Corey Sanhagen, he's a nightmare. Cheeto's so durable, tough. He kicks really hard. Henry Cejudo is a stud. He can wrestle good. He's a, he has great conditioning. All these guys are beasts, and anything can happen in fighting. So, in my mind right now, I'm just we're gonna enjoy this week, enjoy this weekend. But we got to get back to work. There's still so much growth that Sean can have. He's not near his potential right now um so there's so much work we still have to do and the the hard works and discipline really has to start now mm. gotta also ask about Alja. obviously the guy is super classy man the way that he handled that loss and the way that he spoke at the press conference was super inspiring and adds to his legacy for sure but do you th think we see him fight sean again in a rematch down the line i know like he said that he's Probably not going to be moving to featherweight now. He's probably not going to be fighting Arsene Kanovsky. Not going to be trying to get that fight. Do you think he works his way into another rematch with Sean? Do you think that's a rematch that goes much differently? Uh, I mean, potentially. But maybe the UFC looks at that and they're like, we're, we're, Aljo is probably going to move to 145. And, and looking at him in the cage, I was like, damn, this guy this guy's big and strong. Like, strong. Um, so it's it's hard to say, but he he is a great champion and he was so humble. It was hard for us to talk any shit on Aljo because we genuinely know he's probably a nice guy and we'd probably be friends with him. Um, and he handled it like a champ. I mean, if he put a get put together a win win or something, I wouldn't be surprised if they, they made it again, potentially. Uh, do I think it'd be different? I, I just don't know. Truly, I, I know everyone around him is like, yeah, the rematch, rematch. But it, in Aljo's mind, does he want the rematch? I'm, I'm not sure because you get in front of someone like Sean that you've never been in front of someone like that, and they never made you feel like that. Uh, you might be hesitant to want to fight him again. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see him on on the show, man, on the Timbo Sugar Show. I think that'd be awesome. I think that'd be also sick for him as well, like to come on so soon, like after the loss. And just kind of like, you know, chat it up now that like all the fight promotions done and in the rear view, don't you think? Yeah, my, that's funny. My girlfriend literally just said that yesterday. She's like, you should have him on your podcast and just talk about yeah. like his life and his routines. Because like I said, mm. he seems like he's genuinely a good guy and the crowd, mm. the crowd hates him. And I think he tries to put on this character and the crowd can see that's not really him. And that's why he gets so much hate. So I like that idea. And he probably would come on. So that'd be cool. Mm. He, he is a great dude i don't know him personally or anything but like the few times we've spoken he, he is a great dude um as for, in terms of like what's next you reckon cheeto most likely it seems to be you 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 whispered something into sean's ear when he was on the mic was that sort of to call out cheeto yeah i messed up i, me I messed up because he, he wanted to he wanted to call out gervonta and get a big boxing match a big boxing match with gervonta a big boxing match with uh floyd but I don't know. He'll probably sit down with the UFC and just figure out what's the biggest fight to make right now. What's the biggest fight? What's going to bring the most m numbers? Try to get on the Conor McGregor um, card and, and make some make some real bread. Mm. So, yeah, Javante Davis, man, uh, that would be a crazy, crazy, crazy fight. When did you guys start thinking about potentially getting that together? Because that that could really be one of the one of the big, big pay-per-view events of quite some time. That's been that's been in our mind for probably three years or more, three years or more, knowing that he's going to want a big boxing fight one day because Sean can box. He can box a lot of rounds. He has I think he's is he two, two and oh professional boxer with it might be one and oh, but with a nasty KO, um, he, he can box. And people are just think we're so stupid for saying that. But if he goes out there and he, he puts his hands on Gervonta. And then people are just going to be like, well, yeah, but it's just like it's never ending with, with, with people and how stupid they are. But, uh, I mean, why not? Javante is a little short dude. Sean is an expert at range. And we know Javante is a monster. It would not be an easy fight. But give us four or five months to, to focus completely on boxing. And uh, I think it'd be more competitive than people think. Mm. And is this something that the UFC is open to? Like, have you heard back from them? Obviously, a huge, huge collab between them. 
but uh, we know they're also hesitant to uh, collab with other promotions. I mean, if it, if it makes sense for Dana and it makes sense for to make a lot of money, then I'm sure they'll be on board. Like Sean has one of the best relationships with the UFC. They love him. He loves them. Um, so whatever's the best business deal, whatever's going to be a huge, huge fight that people want to see, they'll, they'll probably be interested in it. Hell yeah, man. hundred percent. Uh, speaking of big fights, I'm about to run to the shower after this and have a big fight with these stupid freaking, uh, neck beard hairs that I got to get rid of. I haven't shaved in, in far too long, but actually I'm not really going to have a fight because I got manscaped on my side with the Beard Hedger Pro, the phenomenal, phenomenal beard shaving tool that you need in your life because it just makes things easier, man. They've got the 41 millimeter titanium coated T-blade for a comfortable trim and blade durability. And then my favorite part, I was in this chicken shop, Bell's Hot Chicken in Fitzroy the other day. I was wearing the Manscaped top uh, at work and someone goes, hey man, you got any fancy Manscaped stuff for me? I said, yeah, only in my pants, mate. The finished product, baby. No, but seriously, I told him, I said, listen, if you're going to get one thing, get the Beard Hedger because it's got this sick rotary zoom wheel with up to 20 precision length settings for a custom length trim. And look, I've had, you know, the fancy beard shavers in the past, the German brands, all that good stuff. And uh, they come with like six trillion attachments. You're carrying them into the shower with you. It's a pain in the ass. You got to clip them on, take them off, put the next one on. Oh, I want, you know, the sides of my face at number two. Oh, I want the bottom at number three. I love the rotary zoom wheel on the beard hedger because it's all attached. It's all in there. All you got to do is twist it. 20 settings. You can have literally whatever beard you want. If you want to leave the bottom, super long you can do that if you want to shave your mustache off you can do that you can do whatever you want and the advanced lift comb it lifts flat lying hairs for smooth single stroke trimming high performance battery up to one hour of runtime no one has a beard that fierce but if you do that's all right they got you covered and it's waterproof so the thing i love dude i'm a busy guy you are too when I hit a fuck spiders, when I hit a mess around, you do that in the shower, water's running, washing your face, shaving at the same time, bang, easy, all done. And best of all, if you get the Beard Hedger Pro kit from Manscaped, you get everything. The Beard Hedger Pro itself, the beard shampoo, beard conditioner, beard oil, beard balm, free gifts, the beard brush, beard comb, and the beard scissors. You'll have the, be- you'll have the best beard in town. And think of all the women that are wa- going to want to sit on your face. Isn't that right, Dennis? Oh, that's right, man. And a perfect time to get your father this gift now, I don't know if you want women to sit on his face. Hey, he could be divorced from your mother. Yeah. Who knows? But a great gift nevertheless. 20% off and free shipping if you use the code word submission now. The perfect Father's Day present is now available at Manscaped. Get it right now. Yeah, that's right. Bring back face sitting. Uh, anyway, but we're also looking for a good place to watch the fights this weekend. Obviously, uh, Korean Zombie takes on Max Holloway in a naughty little banger that we're all looking forward to. <laughs> and uh, the easiest way to do that is uh, with our good friends at Fanzo. Just open up the Fanzo app, select the UFC Fight Night Holloway vs. Korean Zombie event, and all the pubs near you will be sh- uh, that are showing the fight will appear. I've got it right in front of me. Let's, for argument's sake, say the Windsor Ale House. What are you all about, Windsor Ale House? Decent rating. You got the, uh, the footy tipping there as well. Uh, six screens, commentary says food, Wi-Fi, garden projector. I like it. There's another one nearby that has 50 screens, but I don't think they have Wi-Fi. So this one has Wi-Fi. The Windsor Ale House, you win our, uh, you win our <laughs> business this weekend. How good is that? And best of all, the fight's on at 10 p.m. So you can have a naughty little night out with the boys. Beers, fights, 10 p.m. Finally, it's like it's it's like we're in the U.S. No more uh, afternoon events that we normally have here. We can go out and have a proper proper ruddy good time. Isn't that right, Dennis? That's right, man. And I love that. Like, why not set up a great pub that is on the way for you and the boys to then go out afterwards? When's the Ale House? Perfect location. And you can find the perfect location too with the Fanzo app and the Fanzo website as well. Just make sure to click the link in our description that gets you straight to the events page. So you can start searching now. It is the ultimate venue finder and absolute lifesaver. Another great one by the boys and girls over there at Fanzo Cast. Yeah, that's right. Big ups to Fanzo. Uh, but Tim, going back to you, man, and we'll let you go in a second. Um, but I've been wanting to ask you this for a while, just because the the Cheetah rematch is the most likely, um, you know, next one that's going to happen. And you guys would have had a long time to sort of go over that fight, go over that first one, and, and think about it and see what you guys would do differently. I am curious, what would you guys most likely do differently, and what would be the di- the, the biggest sort of difference maker um, if and when they finally have the long way to rematch? uh yeah it would be in a big cage it would be in a big cage and it would probably look a lot it's going to look a lot similar to how cheeto looked versus Corey sanhagen cheeto stands there flat-footed 
He's going to, I mean, his biggest weapon is he, yeah, he does kick pretty hard. He has hard shins, so he's going to kick hard. But realistically, over five rounds, man, he's going to have to really get lucky again. But again, Cheeto's super tough. We're, we were definitely not going to take him lightly, and we're going to train for real as hard as we can for Cheeto and, and prepare for a war against that guy. But I, I just, I just really see Sean knocking him out, especially if that the same Cheeto shows up that fought Pedro and the same Cheeto shows up that fought Corey Sanhagen. Um, he's going to probably – it's probably going to be a paint job. Well, I'll tell you what, man. I'm excited to be in the sugar era. Congratulations again. And by the way, UFC throwing up the fight on YouTube basically right yeah. after it finishes. And Instagram as well with the finish. They yeah. Do that. that was crazy. Yeah, uh, one of the me the guys that were doing the social media back uh, backstage, he said, "Yeah, Dana and the the higher ups have never done this. They said, let it rip, throw it out there on everything. Who cares? Let it rip." So, <laughs> Did they say pretty, why? I, I don't know. Probably just they they know just all the social media, um, all, all the influencers are behind Sean. All these people probably just to make him more of a superstar. Mm tell you what uh it's like john berthel in the bear right let it rip guys make sure to follow tim of course your, your youtube channel man check out all the great content make sure to subscribe we'll have a link to tim's youtube channel in the description below of course follow him on social media as well at tim welch mt man so much going on for you guys so happy for you guys so excited thanks so much for taking the time tim and enjoy those celebrations man long overdue have a big hell one yeah <laughs> hey thanks so much guys we'll talk to you soon